Hi, I am Evangelist Wayne Brown of Dayton, Ohio. This program here is going to be shown on the YouTube. But I also have a radio program called uh, Evangelist Wayne of Dayton. I've been on the radio for about 10 years, or a little over. I have a TV program since 2005, a Bible study called Let Us Study Together. Through my knowledge of the Word of God and through my growth as I grow as a Christian, I have learned so many things. One of the things I have found in the Bible um, is that we have those promises. And those promises is for all who will obey His Word the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But we also have covenants. And you know, the Hebrew writer says, there's no covenant without the shedding of blood. Wow, and I thought about that. Even when we had the covenant with Abraham, remember every male child had to be circumcised? And when he was circumcised, there was blood. The covenant of circumcision had to do with the bleeding of that male child when he was circumcised. Then when Moses came along, we have the covenant of the law of Moses. In that situation, we had animal sacrifices and the shedding of their blood. You know that Jesus lived under the law of Moses and he lived that law perfectly but Jesus had to die didn't he he had to shed his blood that you and I might have a covenant with him and from that covenant after his death after his resurrection after he had shown himself for ten days that he has indeed conquered death and then on that 40th day, he ascended back to his Father in heaven. And on that 40th day, um, and, and 10 days later, he sent his Holy Spirit of promise. There's one of those promises. And that promise was in John 14, 26, and John 16, 13, where the disciples who became apostles on the day of Pentecost would receive his word through his spirit. Yes, it was Jesus' his spirit because you can read in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. In fact, I think I'll go there real quick uh, so I don't read it wrong. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, maybe it was 1 Corinthians. It was 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And um, we read here on verse 17, now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So we find here in 2 Corinthians that the Lord is that Spirit. So that promise was fulfilled. He sent his apostles the promise of that Holy Spirit in the book of John. And John uh, fourteen twenty six reads, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all things that I say to you. I also mentioned uh, John sixteen thirteen, where it reads, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you, and he will, and he will tell you things to come. Okay. So the apostles have the Holy Spirit and they taught baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. Uh, I say that because they remembered what Jesus said in the book of Luke 24 and uh, verse 47 and that repentance, and this is Jesus speaking, and that repentance and remission of sin would be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. 
And Acts chapter 2 is that day in Jerusalem. And they began to preach baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. As it reads here in Acts um, uh, 2, 38, Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, that's the only way you can get that gift, is if you obey his word and are baptized in his name. I want to say something here, and you're probably going to um, wonder for a moment, but if you'll think about it, you'll know that it's the truth. I've only heard one other preacher ever mention this. Remember when we talked about the blood covenant of Abraham, the circumcision and blood? We talked about the blood of the goats and the um, uh, bulls of the circumcision, uh, pardon me, of the uh, covenant with Moses. And then we talked about the um, covenant with our Lord that he had to shed his blood uh, to have a new covenant. But did you know that when a man and a woman come together for the first time in marriage, they have to consummate their marriage? And when they do that, the female virgin bleeds. That is a covenant between that man and that woman, a blood covenant. That one, it's a little hard to swallow, isn't it? But if you think about it, it's true. But today, men and women lay with anybody they want. They don't have a blood covenant. They didn't even, they wasn't taught about that blood covenant. They wasn't uh, aware that the first one they lay with when they get married to that person, when they break that wound, that blood, the, the blood flows, that's the blood covenant of a man and a woman. With the rest of my time, I'd like to read to you in the book of Colossians, because this tells us how we get into the body of Christ through the church. And I'm going to be in Colossians chapter 1, and I'm going to start with verse 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will with all, and spiritual understanding. That's sometimes a, a prayer that I pray for more knowledge, wisdom of his will. You know, I know that that's what he wants me to have, so I know that that's what he's going to give me. Uh, I don't pray for a new car. That is not something the Lord provides for me. He wants me to have uh, uh, transportation. And where, however that comes, that's how it comes. But he does want me to have wisdom and knowledge of his word. And so that's the thing I pray for. I always add to that, teach me to love, because I know without the love of my neighbor, I cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Love for one another. In fact, that's... The second greatest commandment, isn't it? The first is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your might, with all of your soul. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus says on these two commandments lies all the laws in the word of God. All. We're going to read verse 10 now in, first, uh, in, Corinthians, in Colossians. And it says here that you might walk worthily of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might, according to His glorious power, for all patience and long-suffering with joy. Then it uh, says, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. If you read 13 all the way down to, uh, to uh, 23, uh, because I don't have the time, because this is going to be a short uh, YouTube, um, on the YouTube. See you again as we study the Word of God together.